Hello everyone, Nova here. I'm going to try something new today, and I'm going to be giving an interview to two of VRChat's greatest interviews, in my opinion. Lion and Raptor of Medivest... Medivest... Of Medivest. English is very hard. English is hard. Ask him. Medivest? What the fuck is Medivest? Sounds like a goddamn candy wrapper. What the fuck is Medivest? Welcome to Medivest. Sounds like a disease you get on your ass. No, this this is actually the cure (laughs) that we are looking for. For those watching at home, what is Metaverse DGen? What do you guys do? Metaverse DGen is a podcast VR chat podcast interview style talk show thing you would think after doing it so long i'd be a lot better at giving it a title or some way of describing it but we interview people in a, in a podcast style format asking about what they do who they are how they get started technical details and also forget what english is myself you want some of my coffee bitch i can give you some coffee bitch so that'll <laughs> help you enough. out that spits it out bro <laughs> no you didn't have enough <clears throat> it's pretty much basically like what line says it's mostly benefit and the people that are in vr and who they are and where how they get here and where they want to go what they want to do because there's so much to do and without them we won't be here so that's what we do what kind of inspired you to start doing metaverse degen as like a vr chat interview style series metaverse degen had its origins as like a bro style podcast in the beginning in the first year raptor and i weren't the ones who initially took or started the channel that was a friend of ours lolly but between work and some other things going on he couldn't run it anymore so he gave it to us after the first year i brought someone else on and then eventually raptor and raptor and i thought it'd be fun to interview people as like a why not let's give it a try and then now here we are over a year year after that decision crawling on two two years of the channel's existence and we're still doing it they'll be in a shit after two years oh i've been that way all my life that's no problem you can ask my mom that question. She'll tell you the same thing. I almost guarantee you that 54 years ago, you're probably the exact same person being a little snot. <laughs> but dad, what the hell are you talking about? I had a snot. I'm just a bigger pain in the ass. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you kind of start doing this? How long have you been at it so far, would you say? The broadcast style interview, like the first Origins of Metaverse Degen, started around March 11th, about two years ago. And about last year, I'd say around January, we, tr- we started doing interviews and they kind of started off very cringy and not good. But because of the friends we've had, they wanted to take part... They wanted to take part and support our idea. People like at Misbehaven, a VR chat, Risque Dance Club, and they supported us and wanted us to give us a shot. And in the beginning, we weren't doing straight interviews only. They were kind of interviews and then like a regular podcast topics is the best way to put it as a way to fill in the amount we wanted to do. And Raptor and I picked topics we wanted to talk about anyway. But as Metaverse Degen kind of spread and people, we started to be a bit more known, we are we don't need to do fillers, I guess is a way to put it. We do straight interviews only and we've been going ham since. And Raptor, have you been on it from the start, like from the start of the broadcast or did you hop on later? Like when did you kind of hop in? When Lion first started it out and everything else, I met him through Lolly and everything else like this. And he had another gentleman, actually two other gentlemen. There was actually three of you three or four of you start doing it and everything else like this and they took it from there and they were doing where you would have a group of four or five people and they were just talking about on weird shit anything and everything i come in and everything else like this trying to help them find people or something to talk about you know interview people that are in vr because that's where it's at to me it's the people in vr the g- gentleman we won't mention names and stuff like this other things came up on it was the main person with lion and everything else he decided oh, i'm done i got it i'm done and it wasn't us i mean the metaverse degen part of it and everything else it was just other stuff in his life everybody's got a life you know it's not just vr this is where you live he dropped down and i he come line come up and asked me and stuff like this hey would you help me out and i go fuck yeah i'll help you out i don't give a shit what do you want to do and mostly uh lion is the big backbone of it all i'm here to support him in any form of fashion and everything else like this it's not it's not one-sided it's he always says him but it's we 
and I'm the little we, obviously. We we actually jumped. If you actually get technical, that very first year the, it was just him and I. We were, how you want to put it, putting your hand in the cookie jar and hopefully you got the cookie you were looking for, knowing it was multiple. And we sat there and knocked stuff down left and right. It, it, we got to where we, you know, okay, it's not this. This ain't working. And it's hard. It's not easy for anybody that does anything in VR. If you don't get your feet wet, like Lion says, and stick it out, you get burned out in it. You just go, ah, screw it. Most people say, screw it. I'm not going in. Never look at it that way. Lion and I did it, and we're still doing it because we enjoy it. We have fun talking, meeting new people. We work with, in real life, we work with the public, so that's a plus. And one day, I think we were screwing around. If you remember right, we were screwing around and everything else like this. We took subject and asked people just universally, just world hop. You know, walked up and boy, did we have fun with that one. That was fun. Remember the doctor <laughs> yeah. situation? And oh, yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> that was funny or shit. The guy that actually was on VR was actually a magician. But, you know, you, we asked him a question, something like that. And then, you know, we just interviewed him for a brief second or two and then left him alone. We didn't want to be a bother. You know, people are in here to have fun, relax, their ordeal and everything else like this. And Lion goes, you know something? And we looked and we were batting around and I go, Lion goes, we had better results just having fun interviewing people. Let's do that. And I go, okay, why not? What the hell? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We'll hit the next project. We'll just, we'll find that knack. We just kept until we found it. Here we are now. We're still doing the same thing. Still acting like crazy people. Lion's, Lion's the serious one. I'm the screwball. You know, we have fun with you. You got to have a little bit of fun in it between it and everything else like this. He's like a brother to me, and he's on the other fucking goddamn side of the United States, and I'm dead center. So, you know, I'm older, he's younger. You know, he's just like a younger brother to me. He's not my older brother. Goddamn, I hope not. Like, I could shit, be your you older brother. Older. You're not older than I am, you twat. What the hell's your brain at, fart? I have a brain. I know, yeah, well, yeah, the one you always, <laughs> the one brain cell you keep arguing about, and so do I, and I keep trying to look it for mine, you put yours back in, but we have, like I said, we do a lot, so we have fun with it, and that's the biggest thing, that's what keeps me staying beside him, talking about stuff and everything else, and we, you know, it's not easy, it's, it's not as easy as it looks, but it's fun in the long run, and that's where we get the most joy out of it, it's the, <laughs> To see the people come back, you know, hey, I got to see myself, you know, and everything else. And it's not that they're looking for fame. I got to see myself and how I and everything else and that, 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 like this. And they get excited. And boy, some of them do when they come on. Holy Christ. Oh, God yeah, damn. Some of them, you, some of them, you're going, you're just bouncing around trying to keep up with them or me. I'm moving backwards all the time <laughs> like I'm doing now. But they're so excited, but they have no idea what questions we're throwing because we shoot off the whim. All we do is line throws the questions off of what, like you're having a conversation. You know, it'd be like you're going up and talking to somebody. That's how you meet people in here. There's a lot of podcasts that I've seen both in, in VR chat and a lot of them tend to have that conversational piece and some of them tend to be scripted and there's no right or wrong way to do things. Rapt and I just really like the conversational uh, piece. We're just kind of getting to meet them where the questions come from what they say. Rapt and I both enjoy seeing and hearing from people what makes them happy and excited. Why do they come in here? Uh, whatever they're enthusiastic and passionate about, we like hearing about. So we feel like we can dig in further into who they are as a person by doing things in that fashion, the whole authentic questions. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like the scripted thing. We tried it a little, little bit and it did, I wrapped and I did like how it looked. So we kind of fell back to what we did know and that's running our face holes. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, we can do that one. We do that one quite a bit. You know, like like Lion says, the biggest thing is when you are talking to somebody without the camera. If you put the camera completely out of the sight of it and you go up and what's funny is we it's not really funny, it's the part of meeting the person like me. Lion mostly meets these people sometimes for the first time more than I do, and I go in blind. Completely blind. I have no idea what this person's like, and I like it that way. Because it'd be like me and the educational that you get from that one person, no matter what they do. 
it's a lot of it's educational and it's not it doesn't mean if it's it's a club or what they're doing in vr or anything it's just their personality that right there is enough to feed a network in multiple directions in my point of view you get to know the person and then the next time they come by and then you go it's funny we get this all the time line gets a kick out of this one so do i line will be sitting there talking to this person and all of a sudden i'll tag him in and everything else and all of a sudden i hear my name and i'm going okay everything else like this the person's right there and i'm standing down here what ha- and this guy i saw your video it was great and everything i liked the little like the little fox running around and everything else and i'm sitting right i'm standing right there standing there the whole time and i go yeah what's about it you what do you like about it and the guy people just go ape shit like why yeah there was you know <laughs> there's this huh? one guy that uh was uh came up to me raptor and i were in a club of sorts of, of a friend of ours i think it was only love fam and we were just chilling out with our other friends there and one of one of the attendees comes says, i've seen your videos and i really like this i really love the little fox guy he's so great he has a voice for radio i think it's amazing and raptor's down there going oh really what, what do you like about it? He comes out, oh, look, you're actually that small. And it was the most funniest <laughs> exchange I have well, ever well, seen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's great. You know, it's it's great. I get a kick out of it. I really do get a kick out. That right there is enough to feed me for days. Because you are actually, you know, our videos are trying to represent not us. We're trying to relate what they are and who they are and everything else like this, just to look in our way. But it's like, like I said, it's like having a conversation with people in here. You know, if you could mm-hmm. interview every person that's in here, just by having a conversation, you'd have, you'd have so much video, you wouldn't know what to do with it. Especially since every mm-hmm. year around Chris, Christmas and people are coming in all the time. I, I, I guarantee you by the time we reach year three, there'll be so many new groups, communities, and clubs starting and doing things. We're going to have a hard time reaching the end of this rope we started pulling. I almost guarantee yes. you it's going to take forever. Mm-hmm. It's going <laughs> to take forever. And, and it's great. That's what makes VR. And what's great about it is what, what information we give from the person that's giving it. It's helping the people in the real world because you, you ask anybody. If you ask, go up and ask somebody if they know what VR, they'll look at you and don't know what the hell, the, what the hell you're talking about, unless they've been in here. You know, it helps out if somebody sees it and going, hey, wow, it might give them an idea that they might want to make a world or an avatar themselves or create or, or make a club and everything else like this and find out what information it takes to get there to be popular. If you want to look at it, if you want to be that type of person, that's that's who you are if you want to have where you have friends and stuff like this coming to a world enjoying your world and there's a lot of them oh god without Mm. the worlds we'd be nothing we'd be all standing in a puddle literally in a puddle trying to look at a mirror oh wow we saw the video on the mirror thing that was funnier now but um you would just be standing around crowded in one area trying to have a conversation after a while it just burns itself out without the worlds Mm. we don't have no place to go one of the things Raptor and I try and do with our videos is we choose to do our videos and set each in a different world. And it's not because we don't have a home. It's because I kind of want to showcase not just the person we're interviewing, but also the worlds here. Someone may see the interview and be like, wow, that's a really cool world in the background. I want to see it. And the description of every video is the world link, so you can find it yourself. And it's one of the... I'm not sure how to do it. I don't, I haven't you tried my hand at the world hopping videos like what Jewelry Box does, but it's one way that, that we do it. And we're just trying to show people VR on the outside of the internet, other side of this little screen thing here. Hey, 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 hands off the merchandise. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey, uh, you're going to get in trouble. Yeah. Okay, he's going to, see, I told you, you yeah. never can get, see, I told you I might, I might be small and the oldest here, but he don't fucking listen for shit. He's always sticking his hand where the AIDS post. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to kind of kind of branch off kind of a tangent from what we were talking about. Totally unrelated. Uh, it was just in the back of my head. But were there any people that you spoke to that you either came out of it like, whoa, we just talked to that person or that is not at all what I expected, like in a positive way? Like, what are some experiences you've had? with interviews in that kind of way most interviews we do i raptor and i kind of have our thoughts of who they are or what kind of things we'd hear from them but almost all of them we always end up surprised 
There are uh, some of them, though, that stick out to mind. I want to use Gopal Metro as an example. When we talked with Gopal Metro, he's an individual that has a musical background uh, with a band, Bella Morte. He came into v we learned that he came into VR, he started a group where he's coaching musicians within within their trade and business and other stuff of that nature. And we heard all about that. We also learned he's big into AI and we want I had a pretty long conversation with with the gentleman. Fascinating individual. Very recently we started interviewing people within the group Studio Penrose and learned about the VR uh, filming in VR and all the ins and outs of that and with with some of their uh projects like uh, emergence for an example and we've learned so much about that and almost all the times the things that surprise me the most are the people who are very passionate about what they do like you can tell within their voice when someone wants to do something versus someone trying to get fame for it like the person who wants to start a fun little club and they want to do it just to get a name recognition it almost burns out as soon as it starts within like the project and when they talk about it, it's you can hear by the by what they're talking about the information we get forth it's not really something that they want to do they're just trying to get quick notoriety it seems but with people like gopal metro and studio penrose you can tell it's what they're very much so into and you could tell it's a passion of theirs within everything they say the information they know it's conversations like that that always sticks with me the most when we interviewed the group, the filming group that we just got done doing and everything else, one that stood out the most to me was Cat. When he come in, he come in, if you watch oh. the video, he come in late. He come They're in this... late. Cat's not part of the film crew. Cat is part of Quantum Networks. Well, Cat, I call him Cat. I always abbreviate everybody's name because big names screw me up. He, uh, when we were interviewing, it started out with four guys. And before it was over, we had five because he come in late and everything else. And he was so energetic. You could see it. He was talking, you know, he's tried to, you know. And that's one hard thing when you do interviews with a group. It's one of the hardest things. Everybody's trying to get out what they want to say, knowing we got plenty of time. They think they got a deadline. They don't. Not with us. You take your time, whatever you kick out, how long you want to do it, that's no problem. Because we don't cut nothing. The line does not chop, try not to chop anything. He adds to it for funnies, but never chops down to make it shorter. It's whatever, because it's you, not us. But we interviewed Cat not too long ago. And don't get me wrong, he's got a new two-month-old two month old child, right? He was home. We had the interview, and that was just this week. Everything else like this. And you could hear him in his little one in the background. He apologized. Hey. We, that's just the way it goes. And everything, that and his PC decided to fart, if you get my drift. It didn't want to work the way it wanted. Welcome to VR. That's just the way it goes. Your shit, when you think it's going to work great, it's going to piss piss down your Fruit Loop trail, and you're going to end up picking them up as it goes. He'd go start talking and stuff, why not give him a question, and you're sitting there, okay, yeah, all right, let's look. And he's, he's pumped. The boy is pumped. He's got what he wants to say, and he's pumped. You can just hear it in his voice and you can feel the vibe coming off of what he's trying to put out there as the questions lines are throwing and everything else like this and all of a sudden the baby cried in the background i'm sorry i'll be right back and then all of a sudden his geared goes shitty or something like this and it took longer and he apologized and he goes i am sorry and he goes you can cut this and cut what we don't do that you know we don't try to shorten it down to make a timeline and you could just feel the vibe this boy was trying to put out that's great because he's enthused in what he does and what he loves in VR. And that makes, like I say, makes VR. Because like I said earlier, if everybody was just standing around, didn't do anything, it's not VR. It's no fun. It gets boring. You're going to go find something else to go do and VR would be standing over in the back. Oh, yeah, I remember VR. That'd be pretty much what it amounted to. But you get people like Cat, and there's Cat's not the only one we've got a whole bunch of them that you can feel the vibe knowing you can't feel nothing in here unless you pinch yourself and if you want to do that that's your priority but you got people in here you can feel the energy that they're trying to put off excited as hell we're not here to judge be yourself have fun mm. give it what you want to throw and we don't judge 
it's you this is you you know like lying says it's not fake you who you are you doing what you've been doing you got into whatever your whatever field that you're doing in vr that you enjoy and have fun with it and you're putting it out there how long whatever it takes whatever questions we feed off of you that's how how we are we feed and i feed off the being the smart ass off of what goes on just by the quotes that's how i get my information i give some question lines always ask me don't you have questions to ask these folks biggest thing is when you get somebody if you ever worked with the public and everything else like this if you're talking to somebody everybody hates an interrupter am i correct everybody hates an interrupter that comes right in the middle if you're having a conversation most people are polite enough to wait to say hi or something like this but when a lion's on a roll i let him have the floor i wait for my spaces sometimes the question i want to ask he's already beat me to him so why repeat him so my biggest thing is is okay i'll make a funny out of something here because and it's not to pick on our guest it just sometimes something comes off funny and i start to laugh and stuff like this because i'm thinking of funny shit in my head and everything else like this and line will look over him at me like what and you have something to say no just the what come out of his mouth line has this big thing that he keeps talking about and i'll let him describe it because i'll know i'll oh, fuck it up one of the things that happens to me the most is when I'm having a conversation with somebody and a lot of the times they'll say a bunch of things and I have like 45 questions and things I want to know pop in my head and trying to get the thoughts out, I lose the thoughts. It's like watching a fa uh, a large crowd run through a small do doorway. Lots that lots behind the door, but nothing's coming out. It happens to me sometimes what he's referring to, but usually I'm very capable of recovering most times. But yeah, he can't, it happens he, to the he, best of he's, us. He's, it's quick, cause, but it's funny. You know, that's just being us, you know. Most people, in my point of view, would probably cut that and start again. I'm going to restart this question. Why? And that's how we look at the broadcast that we do is why. Shouldn't be why. Right, because you want to keep it authentic, basically. Pretty much. And I think yeah. the biggest thing is, since we've noticed, if you want to ask this question, I'll answer it for you. We see a lot of, th a lot of changes on the people that have been watching our in our broadcasts and they understand what we're doing and everything else like this they get a little bit of a feel for it and that's good and they come in thinking that we got a list of questions longer in our foot and actually we probably 10 to 1 we only got four you know line and i don't have anything i have no hmm. idea i'm running blind i listen to what the person's doing what they're talking about and everything else like this to come up with a question. Line comes off the, he does it all the time, right on right on shot just by what the person's spitting out. And that's hmm. the way it should be. For those who are watching at home, I said this before recording, I didn't have a single question going into this. I had an idea, let's interview these guys, and that was it, and here we are now. There are lots of people doing various interviews and we're not the experts at it. There are people out there who's been doing a oh whole God, lot longer no. they have in various fields as well. Like with the news, for example, and there is value, a lot of value in knowing what you're going to say, what kind of questions you're going to give the guest, knowing who the guest is from the start. You could provide a lot more quality uh, answers and uh, conversations with the guest. Raptor and I just enjoy the, the authentic conversation with them. Maybe there's a way that we could do both, but honestly, I kind of prefer the whole shooting from the hip. And also, I want the guests to feel like they're being listened to instead of like, here's some very specific list of things we want to know from you, and then we're going to shoot you out the door. No, if we're going to talk with them, mm -hmm. we want to talk with them. If they end up talking about some very niche thing within their skills that they know about, and that's something you're happy talking about let's open up let's open it up ask more questions on that thing it's great to have like i want to know mm -hmm. about this controversy and what got you started and then all the other things but at the exact same point i feel it doesn't feel right to me because if you're going to get to know somebody you want to get to know somebody not like here's the set list and we're going to answer this list and that's the end of the video it doesn't feel right to me personally now I have to think of another question now that you said that. I'm just like, it's like, yeah, now what? <laughs> <laughs> I got this boy dumbfounded. He's going, hmm. <laughs> 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 no, that ain't going to work. Yeah, it happens a lot. Uh -huh. You're, you're going to find out. It, it happens a lot. And 
the best, like I said, the best thing, the best thing to do is just feel it. Just feel whatever, if you can keep up, that's the hardest point of the conversation. When you're making a conversation with somebody is when you ask a question and you return it with a question and then we got to feed off of what your ne- your answer is so we can take it to the next question and it could go anywhere and we've had questions that literally go to a tangent it just goes to left field has nothing to do what they were just talking about they just went to the left field they they did or we do one or the other but it goes that direction all of a sudden lion has got to turn around and pull it back back to where it is and everything else like this and they're just being themselves and that's great we're not okay you want to talk about this thing and just go keep going ape shit with it run with it and we stand back and listen and everything else like this trying to get a feel because what it amounts to is like i say it's getting a feel who this person is in vr you get to know them just a little bit more i didn't say everything but just a little bit you find out what their personality is like and you're not even asking what their personality is like you're just because guess what all you got is a voice people that's all you have you have no nothing else to feed off of and that's vr so you have to listen how they're excited how they're enjoying what they're doing and you can feel the vibe like i say you feel the vibe just like when lion's throwing out the questions and he comes out with, I have one I keep using all the fucking time, over and over again. What was the first thing, and I ask this all the time, whether what was the first thing you did when you put this gear on and you come into VR and went into the world and you saw it made you leave ASP? The weirdest thing that makes your mind run, want to run from the world that you're in. And the biggest thing is, I don't know when to put it out there. Because when we start and everything else, you just all of a sudden I'll throw my question in. And there we go. It changes it up a little bit, makes the person, it might even make the person relax. Because a lot of people come in tense thinking they're going to screw up. No, you're not going to screw up. You're human. You're being yourself. You're in VR. Be yourself. We're not. And we tell them this at the beginning before we even interview, you know, what you say, just be you. You do it any other other time it ain't gonna make any difference because there's a camera in front of you Mm, who cares one of the things we also tell guests a lot of the time is don't think of this like an interview or a podcast or some specific show where you got a script just think of it like you're with with somebody in a drinking night or a black cat and you're getting to know each other it's more akin to that than it is some big fabulous show we're just trying to get to know them. That's all we want. That's all we want. What makes you tick? Why'd you get started? What pulled you into VR? What's the weirdest thing you've seen that makes you laugh? What is your skill set? How did you get into the skill set? What drives you? And as we get to those, are the only things we we get into. And from there, we've found and met some amazing people that way. And quite honestly, VR is filled with them. It's one of the most amazing things. And to one of the questions you had said earlier, things that amazed me the most is how passionate a lot of the people in VR is with their various skill sets or trades or passions they have here is people dive right into it. Like earlier on, when we first started interviewing people, we started get doing like the club scene and just kind of how, how the cards laid. But one of the things that kind of blew like an, on that I blew my mind at that point in time is how organized a lot of those people are and everyone involved in the organization of of the club whether it's a rave or dances or whatever there's so much that goes into running those events for the people who attend them that and everyone enjoys doing it from the person running security at the front desk to the dj at the front to the person who runs the club making sure everyone's organized and running smoothly that that blew my mind i didn't think there was a whole lot of things there but that's half the fun when you get to meet these people whoever sits across from raptor and i here is learning all those things from them raptor and i don't know half of the stuff people here in vr do so that's why we ask questions you won't get any answers to things if you don't ask i pissed my shirt my body's sweating in the back so bad i feel like i peed my soul (laughs) oh no back piss back piss is the worst you can't mess with back piss fuck 
God damn, my back's sweating. I'm not even fucking nervous, and fuck, I'm sweating like a pig. Listen, it's okay. What I understand. I, I make you nervous, Raptor. I understand. Don't worry about it. Oh yeah, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> At my age. Yeah, right. Uh huh. Mom, I peed myself. Oh, shit. My back okay. peed itself. <laughs> I'll stand up and let it air out. Okay, well, you got I'm listening. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Uh, that's okay. I was going to say mm -hmm. uh, one question that you actually brought up that you, you mentioned in your interviews and stuff is something that popped in my head just before you mentioned it, so I'm not stealing this from you right now. Mm. <laughs> but um, what did get you into VR? What got you like invested and involved in VR and then VR chat as a whole? Like, What was the the one thing that dragged you in and what made you stay? I personally initially got into VR to sheer curiosity. I saw this thing called the Valve Index and I was like, oh, what kinds of things can you do in here? And, and initially what started that whole thing is was the uh, Half-Life Alex. I saw the trailer for it prior to the things like I, I was a big Half-Life fan and that in itself piqued my curiosity. Like, oh, you can only play in VR, boo, that stinks. I don't have the ability to play it. And so from there, I looked into headsets, found the Valve Index, cool. And then saved my money, bought it, got into the thing. And then eventually what got me into VR chat is it was just free. It's like, what is this thing? Okay, cool. Let's go go on an adventure. Let's try it out after I finished Half-Life Alex. That had, to happen, that had to happen first. And then here I am now, three, three years later, four years later. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> it's been too long. <laughs> I started in this. Without the headgear, I bought the Quest Quest 2 when it first came out. And I didn't buy it for me. I bought it for, and I was already, I got into v, the VR as a stiffy. And I do, I still play as a stiffy sometimes because the gear feels like I'm wearing a six pound toaster with a battery on it. I got it for my daughter because my daughter has anxiety of being around crap. I figured, what the hell, I'll buy her a headset. Well, before it was over, I ended up buying three of them in the house. When my wife was alive, and stuff like this. She, I figured, well, I'll get her and we can both interact. She likes, see, wants to see different worlds, see different things, her health diminished and stuff like this. I couldn't take her where I wanted to go. So I figured maybe I could join her and go with her. Well, we got it for the daughter. I put it on and mean being stupid, I put the headset on right away. And the first thing I, hey, I like roller coasters. <laughs> Yeah, I could put it on for three days. I did immediately stupid. First time in it and everything else like this. Then I hopped into VR and everything else like that. Immediately I turned around and ordered one right behind it. Right behind it. And I gave her one. She comes in here once in a great while and stuff like this. She's, meet, she's met some friends and stuff like this. Met a few boyfriends in here. She's 19, you know, and everything else like this. But she still has her anxiety and stuff like this. It's just one of those things. It helps, you hear a lot of people, we've got a few people that we've talked to that we've bumped heads and our secretary, that's Courtney. She's our secretary to do our organizing and our calendar workforce and, and she's, she's a lifesaver, especially for this ass. But when I got in here the first time and everything else like this, the world was, wait, you gotta go back. I was six months beforehand when I, before the quest came out almost a year before that actually and i was seeing worlds learning as everybody else you know just moving up and everything else i took line to one of the worlds if you go to it now the mirror so pixelated until you look like you're playing road you're playing minecraft because the mirror you are that pixelated. nobody uses it anymore it hasn't been updated in years i just been, been myself and just bounced and don't get me wrong, people will find out how old they are, how old I are, and there's old pe older people than me in here. It surprises you. And everything else like this, and you get these young people going, and when you, and it's in my bio, nobody reads bios anymore. I don't think, it's up there just to, you could write gibberish back, but Courtney, when you bumped into Courtney, and she's a good example, she has anxiety with people too. And wow, that girl has made a complete circle. She doesn't see it, but we have. I girl will go places where she thought she'd never go. And, you know, we're crowds. And don't get me wrong, she still has, if it's too much, she backs away. She knows how to work it. You know, if it's too much, you get out of the way and everything else like this. Too much, too much noise. You know, everybody has their, their zones in here. And, you know, 
all that kind of stuff. But she's come a complete circle, and that's great. Courtney, without Courtney, I think we'd have still have trouble. Yeah, you and everything else like this. She's she's mm. another one, a part of our metaverse, but she's our secretary. Mm. We have another site that we do for our Patreons, the Puddle. Me and Line sat down, and pounded that one. I came out with a name that was long, my armpit, and he goes, "Could you shorten it?" We shortened it and shortened it, and before it was over, it came out the Puddle. Um, she's in it now. She give her a little, you know, she's part of the group. Uh, the curse crew we have a curse crew but she's part of the metaverse she's one of the one of the original five the six people that we used to just bs on a line and it was like fishing trying to go fishing without a pole good luck with that because you just bounce around but when i came in here you know black hat didn't exist at all everybody talks about the black or you know or knuckles that wasn't around when i came in i was at the the older worlds where you you know the first world you went through and then you had to go to portal and find all that stuff but i i came in here for to me it's safer to be at home you know i've done the bar scenes enough you know it's okay to do it once when i don't do it anymore but i did that why not just stay home you're comfortable and you're safe in your own home that's everybody's number one in here mm-hmm. at least you're comfortable of what you do, and he does a lot of hmm, hmm. One of these days, I'm going to see if I can get him started, and we can actually go 10 or 15 miles on a hum. <laughs> Thanks, Raptor. But oh, anytime, buddy. That's what we're here for, right? <laughs> Give each other shit, and we tell I tell I tell a lot of people once I met Lion and everything else. He's a troll, so am I. I'm just under an old beat up railroad bridge, ready to fall in. And his is a new highway. He's got the new. He's got the newer set. And I, I'm still, you know, and you know, it's just the people is what I come in here. For. You know, uh, I see. We've. I think everybody's seen shit that you're just going no, no, and yes, yes, it happened. Sorry, and I'm not talking anything off. I'm talking things off the wall. The things you hear, you can learn. That's an, everybody. This is my I'll, the biggest thing is I've been small for four years. Everybody asks me, why are you so small? Why are you so big? I'm small for a multiple different things. I'm going to listen. I have a big mouth, but yes, you do. People don't pick. <laughs> I got one hell of a big mouth, but a lot of people don't notice. Me, and that's the best thing. I, uh, sometimes it hurts that nobody sees me and steps on me or sits on me. That's the number one rule. Everybody sits on me. But it's no big deal because I don't have phantom sense or anything like that. But you listen and you can catch without even saying a word. If you listen, if you can turn the music down and listen to what's going on, if something interests you or you think you have a field in that, or you maybe can put in your two cents worth, if that's where you want to look at it, and meet new people. You got to take a little steps, you know, you got to get over that fear and it's not easy. You know, if you don't work with the public or you're not used to it, Coven did a lot of slap in the ass to a lot of people. And I mean a lot, you logically look at it. And we've heard a lot of that from, you know, the coronavirus when it came around and this, that. It flipped a lot of people into a different gear, you know? You know, it'd be weird if we were at logical way of looking at it what would you do if we were all all of us were actually quarantined to our houses for the rest of our lives you couldn't go anywhere and if you did you had to be in a complete complete hazmat suit walking around just to get or had your groceries had to be delivered you know because you didn't want to you couldn't disease wise worried you know it it scared the shit out of a lot of people and yeah, don't matter what it is or how it works it's just think about it well, how else do you contact or keep keep in contact with people and interact with them the best way you know? Head gear is one way to do it. And I've been, no offense, when people go, yeah, head gear has been out, you know, I, you know, it's been out for a long time and stuff like this. I remember head gear back in the 90, 90, 1990 came out. And it was at Cabela's as a hunting game that you put on and you had this round thing around you. I tried it and I fell in love with it then. And that was back in the 90s, but it wasn't moving very fast because the technology wasn't fast enough. 
Do you I remember what the initial question head. was, Raptor? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually gonna mention because no. you mentioned the like hunting game and everything. One thing I recall was uh, when I was. I am, for reference, 32 right now. When I was in my like early 20s, late teens, we went to, I think it was Chuck E. Cheese, and I can't remember the name of the game, but it was like a mech thing, and it was the same. You had like a thing around you, and you sat in the cockpit, and you just, you held on to the, these like handles that came down from the helmet and like looked around with the helmet and like, you know, shot things and like other mechs and stuff, and it was so immersive, and I'm like, why is this not everywhere? And I think that's when I felt like I didn't see it as VR, but now that I'm looking back on it, it kind of was like if you don't count the Nintendo Virtual Boy, <laughs> um, you know, uh -huh. it, was my, it was my first <laughs> first experience with VR. And like like you said, it's just like I was like, well, I fell in love with that, and I've always wanted to go back to it. But come to think of it, I kind of have now in a way. I remember back when I was a kid. I think it was like ten, eleven, twelve area, somewhere in that area. Excuse now. Uh, I f I f it's been a while, Raptor. It's like two decades since this reference. Shut it. So, when I was at 10 to 12, a friend of mine put had got a really big, bulky thing, which it was a VR game, but it was only one. I don't think there's any slots or anything for it. It was just a singular game, and you just threw ninja stars at ninjas or something like that. That's all it was. Just a really big thing on your head that was heavier than the index. Surprise, surprise, there are VR headsets heavier than the index of this... 60 pound potato on your face but it was a it was fun i remember that little basic looks ninja 8-bit thing you threw ninjas at nin or ninja stars at ninjas i'm gonna throw this guy at you just stick it out there oh i got him yeah i like to see that game that'd be funny just pick up the ninjas and throw them at the stock star in the wall <laughs> oh, that's what you were oh, thinking that's even on, better I, got mm. Mm. I thought you were just i just yeah, thought you were throwing funny, ninjas at ninjas Honestly, it just, it, it just sounds like a body slam with more steps. If I'm being honest, body <laughs> I took down two ninjas with one ninja. Does that mean I get a cookie? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So one thing I wanted to actually ask you both is. Um, you mentioned you do a lot of world hopping. That's kind of like a lot of the inspiration and passion behind doing this too, is showing off the cool worlds that you do the interviews in. Um, what would you say? Just like, give me like a top five of just, I know there's so many cool worlds, but like, what are some really notable ones that you, you really like resonate with and want people to know about? I have a list. Now I enjoy niche worlds, but also the big ones as well. Like for big ones, I would definitely check out things from like Wispy Woo or uh, Fins. Both make really good worlds. Um, worlds that stick with me though, the most are ones I've had the most history in. Which fun fact, one is in the Ferality. The Ferality Tree is a big one. Um, there's also so, an, an, another really cool world run by a Group Japan Street. Really big city based in a, in a city in Japan. A lot to see and explore. That's another really fun one. And organism. Oh, I love organism. Organism's great. Oh, and the epilogue series. If you haven't seen it, you definitely got to go explore epilogue. What about you? What are you talking? Top to? five worlds. Remember, the, five, short five. top five. Answer. It can just be oh, short answer. worlds. Top <laughs> yours. It, 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 can, it can just ass. be it can just be like you know three or four worlds that like kind of like wowed you that you were like man this is what vr is about this is impressive this, i'm coming back to this i'm showing people this why well, knows one that today bun fizzles me to beat hell and i talk about it all the time too bad it's never been re-updated since the guy that created created it i like his method i love he has a YouTube channel. I know that and everything else like this line showed me it and everything else like this. He made what they classified as the vault. He made it in 2017 and it's so far ahead of its time. The man moved, the person moved forward. He moved forward and he was so far ahead of his time. It's sad to see somebody so good at what they do. All of them do so good. It don't matter who you are. Because this way out of my league, 
Shit, I, I'm lucky if I make a box or a tree to hide behind. And I had to hide in there. I hide in a lot of those. But the vault was so far ahead, so far advanced when it was designed and made. And he moved, that person moved forward, just like everybody else does in this world. Everybody moves forward. You got a regular life besides in VR. And it's the, to me, is the number one that sticks in my head. I've got tons of worlds I hop through. And it's the artistic work that they put into it. I can't mention all of them because I can't remember them all and everything else like this. It's I every creator that's out there, anybody who creates, I'll say I'm going to pat every person on the back. It takes a lot, lot, male or female, to do this. And you say, oh, it's not that hard and everything else. But if you take somebody like me that's old, you know, and took the time, and why knows how much headaches he goes through because they go, no, 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 not there, over here. And I feel like I'm my, my dad. My dad can't even push the X button to cancel out his computer, you know, but I'm beyond that, thank God. But it takes so much to use your imagination and then i draw i draw i used to draw in my spare time i've got an imag imagination to just go off the wall and everything else if i could find a creator to actually keep up with my imagination and we wouldn't have where the worlds have to be certain this and certain that just to get everybody in it and we could do that the worlds would be so far out there we would be creating worlds that what a Mount Street, you got one big, and I still say this, and I still say it, we get the time and the people get together and work as one in VR, we could make one world that would blow everybody's mind and it'd be like Ready Player One. You hop in, you can go multiple different directions, but you have one place that you can, can go this way, go there, educate yourself, do whatever. Whatever you're into, give it time we will step on that line and step over and beyond now i'm not saying like that but something like it and the creators of vr is the do people the people that are opening the doors for that they use their imaginations they create everything they they think they see or want to for you know it's not just yeah it's a world yeah i can hang here it's got a mirror to stand in front all this kind of stuff Look back and look at what you're looking at. Look at the artistic detail, the floor. Look at the rocks that this person took the time. You know, it not, doesn't seem like much to them. It might take them a year. It might take them two years to get the world created. It might be something the simplest, simplest thing, but the details are there. I just, I get a kick out of what these people can do artistically and what they're doing. Art forms that they're putting out. It's actually an art look at it it's a piece of moving art if you want want it the candles are flickering down below you can't see it folks but down there there's a freaking light down there it's a piece of art how often do you get a piece of art that actually move or react with you you don't it just hangs on a wall here you're interacting with a piece of somebody's art and thank god for you folks because it makes it fun for me and I can act like an idiot in it if I want to, or I can take it seriously as, as much as I want, you know. But the vault is the one that catches me. And it's a dance place. It's a dance where you can go dance, play a DJ booth and everything. But the artistic work into it, the running, running waterfall just blew my mind. It just literally blew my mind. And I couldn't wait to see what's next. And I, I think that was six months I walked into that place. And today you can't walk more than two people into it and you, you lag out. You can't stay in it. It's that's far behind it is. But it's a good place. I keep going back. I still have it on my list. I've never gotten rid of it. I go back once in a while just to be by myself because I know it won't lag. Just to listen to the music that's still stuck in it. You know, and everything else. But yeah, I get a kick out of running with Lion. Me and Lion check out stuff. I see stuff that he can't see. I'm down here. He's up there. Like they said, it's two different views. Yeah, one thing I want, one thing I really want to add, since you you mentioned kind of like it as an art form and all that, is one thing that not a lot of people do when they visit VR Chat Worlds. 
Just look up once in a while. And I mean, Raptor, you're tiny, so you are always looking up. So you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Like when you're just exploring yeah. a VR oh, chat map, <laughs> when you're just exploring a VR chat map, your eyes are usually here. You know, you might look down here to see what, where you're going. You're never really looking up here. And for me, I feel like a lot of things go missed if you don't look up. Like we mentioned organism and epilogue earlier. There's a lot of rooms where if you're not looking up, you're missing like half the experience, honestly. So just look up once in a while. You know, there's another really good world too that we've come across recently that was really awesome and a beautiful world. Among the Clouds by Little Yui. You're like a, uh, I love like Yui's a maps. Asian style temple. Yeah, Asian style temple mm -hmm. in the clouds. Beautiful world. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been there, yep. give it a visit. And the rest of Yui's world, beautiful stuff. Have you ever been to uh, Yui's Fragmented Mind? It, it's it's like It's got like a bunch of like red crystals and stuff in it. I don't know. It's really, really fascinating. High it's... likelihood, I, high likelihood, I did see it, but I, at this point in time, time have been through so many worlds that they, I, it's hard. They to all remember. blur together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I unfortunately do have some things I get to get to soon, so we're kind of going into the the closing half of it. Mm. Clo closing half, yeah. <laughs> On to another hour. No. Um. So I'm just gonna ask like a few I more. I can do that real quick for you. <laughs> yeah, you got yeah. it. Yeah. Ask him a question. He just won't stop going. He'll, he'll oh, create yeah. his own questions and then answer his own questions. Mm. <laughs> so for the la for the last hour of the video, um, Raptor, how you doing today? I'm doing fine. My and that's it, folks. I'm doing great. <laughs> 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 so uh, one question I wanted to ask kind of near the end of this is um, you mentioned, too, how creation is really hard, whether it be world creation or making videos or, you know, running a club or anything else. What's some advice you have to people who are stuck in their heads of, man, I really want to do this, but I just, I feel like I can't do it. I feel like I'm not good enough. Like I don't have what it takes. Oh, you know what? I'll give you the most VR chat answer that we've heard a lot from people who build stuff, whether it's content creation or worlds or avatars, just do it. I know it's not the easiest thing and or whatever, but sometimes the hardest step is actually doing it. Yes, if you want to build a sword in Blender and it looks really janky and like it belongs in Minecraft, but how many other people out there can say they built the sword in, in Blender? How many people do you know amongst you say they did that? Not a lot. So your sword is, exists is better because it exists. Just do it. Whether it's videos, worlds, avatars, shaders, you want to write a book or make a short film, just do it. It's the best best place to start. Just, just get into it. Because after a while, the experience itself will help build upon your skill set to get better to make those things. But a lot like the job cycle, you can't get experience without the job and so on and so forth. And the best place to start is get the experience. Just do it. And what about you, Raptor? 50 words or less. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. 50 I'm words or less. I'm okay. kidding. I'm, I'm going to see if I can fuck this up for you, folks. All right, Number so we're, we're thing, at 35 no now. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Now, the big... The biggest, the biggest thing in here, like Lion says, is the, being the creator and what you do. If you got a heart desire and you got the taste, I tell this to people even in real life. I have people come to me and ask for advice. And I get that all the time because, oh, you're older. You've been out there, blah, 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 and everything else like this. But when it comes into VR and they ask me that kind of question or they ask me, what have I seen or what have I done and all this kind of stuff and I go venture out get get your feet wet if you want it bad enough and you can taste it you can do anything you set your mind to don't have anybody tell you can't because can't is not in anybody's word it's a mindset so you can do anything you want folks give it hell balls to the wall go big or go home that's what I say if you're going to get your feet wet do it and keep doing it. That's pretty much what it is. And thank you for doing it. The ones are doing. What one other question I'd like to ask before we, we close up here is what do you see for the future of Metaverse Degen? Like what is your goal that you like are you looking towards the future? Or is it just kind of like a day by day thing? Like wherever we end up, that's where we end up. We have various ideas where where we'd like to take it, but right now we're just kind of taking it day by day. We're just right now trying to get good at what we do 
and that's where at least my mind is is before you need to get get uh learn to walk before you can start running i don't think we're quite there yet there now do i have things i'd like to see happen sure but i don't think we're even in the right ballpark to even open up that book <laughs> that's fair that's honestly fair it's correct he's correct you can wish on a star all you want but if you don't go out there and look at it it's still it's out beyond your sight so he's correct you got to look once in a while see what you're doing where you want to go with it how to work work with it if it doesn't where to go for next and if you still have that desire to keep driving keep driving further without driving the not nail i say this too driving a nail in a coffin and burying it because you thought it was not going to go anywhere no you could keep doing it you just got to have and we've had our ups and we've had our downs mine's taken a break a couple times and almost threw his hands up and i said whatever you want to do bud i'll stick beside you 100 percent. those are the friends that make vr and he's one hell of a friend everybody's a friend if he just how much you want to take and what you want to deal with and everything else like this you can blow everything off or you can be right there beside that friend even if they pass out on the floor and you sit there and you wait and you wait hmm. that's the pay a passion of friends in vr hmm. and what you're doing hmm. towards other people and stuff like this i get a great time of being here and i Raptor, hope i I'm... keep going I'm happy for the for, for, for the flattery, but where do you want Metaverse Deejin to go? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> where do I want it to go? I'd actually like to see it go where everywhere. I really do. I'd love to see it where we've got going. It's not how big we get. It just we keep going, and then we don't stop. And that's my biggest goal. I want to see it keep going, and it's not for five years or six years. I'm talking; it keeps going. It's not because I'm making it. We're making a name for ourselves. We just want to make sure VR keeps trucking along for everybody else's sake. That's what I want to see. Because I have fun in here. If I don't have fun, it's a waste of everybody's time, and everybody sooner or later just starts putting it down and walks away from it like if you do reach these goals and you're doing super well for yourself and let's say let's say three years uh what would you want to say right now to that future you like if you had a message to send oh. to the future to yourself that you want to look back on like what do you what do you well, want to say to yourself i know oh it's a heavy God. one that's a heavy one <laughs> oh, shit. okay son of Fair. a bitch he had to pick on that start. one didn't he yeah all right you can pick Go on i'll start Future Lion, for the love of God, I hope you got your mindset on straight and be able to think clearly and answer questions clearly. That's what I want from you. <laughs> <laughs> you chicken shit ass. You fucking roll. Oh, yeah, I'll throw it on the old man here to come up with something. Yeah. God damn it. What? It said, what do I want from future me? And I'm going to tell my future me. I hope the fuck you got good and got better. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. <laughs> <laughs> wow well the future me the future me and stuff like this is to get more asking the questions Lion always says you can ask anytime you want but when you have a role you have a role but the future me I just would say stick it out don't quit don't quit just keep going Stand by the man that got this started, and I'm just going to stick beside him, even if I am just no more than his toe or bigger than his toe. But yeah, just stick it out. Keep going. Don't give up. That's really, really all I had for you guys. Thank you both for, for showing up and for doing the interview. Uh, final notes. Is there anything you'd like to shout out or like, you know, let, let, tell people to go check out or anything specific you want to share before we end it? Check out the rest of Metaverse Degen stuff. You can find us at metaversedegenatcard.co. Also check out some pod, so a newer podcast out there, Novid Notes, similar interview style stuff. Really nice person. Shout out to you, Novid. You know, the puddle. I get a kick out of the puddle. We do history stuff with a little bit of a change up, but that's oh. more of a, our patron setup. We have a patron site, but we don't give a shit about it. It's just there for the shits and giggles and having a blast with it too. But shout out to all the people that 
had the balls to stand in front of us two talking to them and going through the shit that they think they might go through thank you so fucking much for your time because without you we're nothing and without you people in here vr's agreed so pat yourself on the back folks and give it hell so what you're That's telling me say, go big or go home <laughs> so what you're telling me is you want people to go to your channel go to every video and go support every single person you've interviewed no. yes exactly what, go to every video description. You don't have to watch the video, just the description, mind you, and just join all the people. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Enjoy all the people that come in there, not the video. Well, that's all we want. We want you to enjoy them. <laughs> Genuinely, too. Exactly. Genuinely. That's why we do it. It's right. So you can meet that's... new people, maybe a new friend, maybe a new community or hobby you can spend your time doing. Whatever it is you wish, and go support them. With it as as Raptor said, without the guests who come on and talk with us, we wouldn't be doing uh, have half the content or have learned half the stuff we've learned. So, with that said, everything's on every, all of you guys out there, not me. <laughs> I just asked. Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah, you're, you're you like, all, all, it's all off of me, all off my shoulders. I'm not, it's not. <laughs> oh, that's going to do it then. That's, that's all the time I have. Unfortunately, I have some other things I need to get done, but uh, thank you both for joining. And if you guys want to see my, or, you know, the other perspective of them interviewing me i did an interview on their channel a while back now but you can go check that out i'll link that in the description and on the end card and i hope you all have a wonderful day and keep creating